Welcome everyone. This is uh, an emergency session. First session, we have a second session tomorrow. Welcome everyone. So we will start with a very quick introduction. First, we would like to can you go next slide, please. Uh, the IRTF is under the IETF note well, so please be aware of that. Next. Uh, in case you don't have them in the presentation slides, you can find the links towards the agenda, the meet echo, and also um, materials for the meetings. Uh, in order to start the meeting, we need uh, at least two volunteers, one for minute takers and uh, one for the Jabber scribe in Miteco. Anybody volunteering minute takers and Jabber scribe, please? Please, we need someone at least for minute takers. There is only two presentation, it will not be a big deal. Okay, okay so I think we have Jefferson for JavaScript and Giovanni for the meat taker. Thank you very much, so guys. Uh, next, please. So in the agenda today, uh, there will be three, I mean, two, two blocks. Uh, first one is um, a topic session on intent-based network management. We will have two presentations. We have recently received two drafts uh, discussing intent-based networking uh, in the NMRG. The first one will be uh, presented by Alex on the uh, distinguishing intent, policy, and service models. And the second one will be presented by Muli remotely, and it's called Concepts of Network Intent. And then we uh, allocated the time to uh, go through some discussion and next step about this work. <laughs> the second part of the meeting will be to discuss um, um, what has been done in 2017 on the, the MRG and the future of NMRG. Uh, we will go through a bit of uh, history and uh, get your feedback about what to do next year. So Alex, if you're ready, we can start the technical presentation. Thank you. Alex. Hey, thank oh. Okay, so hel hello everybody. So um, I I'm going to present a draft uh, distinguishing intent, policy, and service models. There's a draft uh, co-written uh, also with Laurent and uh, with Lisandro. And uh, the purpose of this draft is really basically to, to clarify those terms and really see how those different concepts relate uh, to one another. Um, so but essentially, it's uh, it basically is motivated by the fact that the intent defined networking is a, is increasingly buzzword. Um, and uh, of course, the, the concept there is you define basically what you want, not how to get it. 
And this sounds, of course, great. I mean, this is, this is very attractive. Really, basically, what you would want uh, to obtain as an operator. Uh, however, the question is, uh, is this idea really new? And actually, really, it is not. There are uh, several things in support that came before it. Um, and so the question is, um, basically, uh, so is it just a new term for the same concept? Or basically, is there something different? And how can we basically distinguish between between these different items, and basically there are particularly two aspects that, that, that uh, or two other concepts or two other terms that stand out there. One is policy-based management. This, of course, has a very long history um, of probably 20 plus uh, 20 plus uh, plus plus years. Same idea: you define basically things at a high level and basically leave it to different stages and so forth to basically render the policy to do the rest, so you don't have to worry about the low-level details. And the um, second aspect is service models and service provisioning. We have also similar things. As you're defining service at a very high level concept. This is basically what I want, the service that I want to get. And you leave it to service provisioning systems and what have you to figure out what are the low level uh, details. Um, so therefore, basically, again, the question is, uh, are, is this basically a reincarnation point of policy? Are those synonyms, synonyms are they, do they mean different things? And why all those terms and how do they relate? And this is basically the purpose or the intent uh, of, of this draft. And this follows, of course, the discussion that we had actually also previously in, in Lisbon and in uh, Prague. <laughs> Okay, so um, basically, uh, in terms of the different terms, so the uh, when you look at the draft, basically it has basically the way it is structured as actually it, it defines or basically introduces those terms and basically tries to dis uh, distinguish distinguish them. So basically, fairly straightforward. Uh, so policies, there are different definitions for policies, uh, rules governing the choices and behavior of a system is basically the classical definition of Snowman in '94. There are other uh, uh, definitions by John Strassner. By, RF, by RFC 3198 and, and, and others, but basically always basically they have in common basically there are sets of rules that you define at a, at a, at a high level to, uh, to define manage control access to, to network resources and so forth. Um, then contrasting to that, there's intent. Um, in RFC 7575, um, which is basically also you, uh, actually this came out of NMRG, I believe actually uh, as, as well. Uh, intent is defined as an abstract high level policy used to operate the network. So really basically this says almost that it's kind of like actually a uh, synonym. And then you have service models, which are models that represent a service that, that is provided by a network to, to a user or set of users. Um, okay. So anyway, so basically concerning uh, these different terms, there are perhaps a few other aspects that are worth mentioning that may be useful to, to explain what these things are and how they relate. There are basically two main concepts uh, that are important here, and those are the, con uh, the, the concept of abstraction and the concept of an information hierarchy. So, and they're basically related to, to all those things. So ab abstraction is related to hiding irrelevant detail, basically to have a, explain a high level concept independent of its implementation and, um, um, and then basically have something that renders the abstraction, breaks it down possibly over several stages um, uh, into basically what it means at a lower level. Then related to that is the aspect of an information hierarchy. It's almost a flip side of the same coin where you say basically that you have a hierarchy of higher, of, of model abstraction that basically become more and more abstract. And then basically at e every level, you will need some functionality, some logic and support to break them down further. And uh, for instance, there's the, uh, t well, uh, for those that remember the TMN reference model uh, uh, regarding management of telecommunication man management networks, uh, this was basically built on that, right? You had basically at the lowest level, they were defining, you have the device or the network element, then you have the next level network topologies and so forth. Then on top of that, you would have services and then you could go higher uh, and so forth still. Um, some other aspects that are perhaps worth mentioning um, uh, is basically how you define the, these abstractions. Do you define it in a declarative way or do you have to define it in a procedural way? way? And um, also, of course, the rendering aspect, I think, as, as mentioned. Um, uh, and finally, also, basically, there are these concepts also don't stand by themselves, but you have also frameworks that, of course, implement them and basically um, implement the information hierarchy in the breakdown of the abstraction. And the framework, actually, this is 
uh, Muli is going to present after this. Uh, Muli and Kartik have a draft that allude mostly to that, and basically taking the point that essentially the uh, intent is essentially what you would be provided at an SDN controller API, which is of course one way of defining it. Um, anyway, so basically there are uh, in the draft when you look at this there. Are, there's another attempt basically at, at terminology to trying to, to distinguish these items. So intent is basically there referring to high-level operational goals uh, whose precise mapping uh, is, is non-deterministic or unknown actually to an operator who, who defines this. The policy, on the other hand, is an abstracted rule of what to do uh, or what to permit. So basically you have obligation policies or permission policies and uh, also using this, basically, in th these, these, these rules are defined given a set of well-defined events, conditions, and actions. So basically, it's not a high-level goal, but basically, they're more, more rule-based. And then finally, basically, service models would be higher-level model ab abstractions that represent services provided to the end user, um, and uh, defining also the mappings to the component resources that are needed to, to fulfill those services. And this is also actually where you would, for, which you would use, but it's also defined things like service function chains. All right. Anyway, so so the structure of the draft, is, as as mentioned, is, is it explains these concepts on their own, building on the existing definitions, um, and then distinguishing them, uh, refining the the concept perhaps a, a little bit because. Uh, in their generality, really, actually, all those terms do become fairly, fairly overlapping and then running into each other. But uh, which basically does not make make it actually very useful. Or uh, so basically, in order to basically provide some structure, tries to delineate de delineate them. Anyway, so this is basically what the what the draft is about. Um, and basically, the question here to the uh, to the working group is essentially: uh, first of all, is this useful? Basically, do we need to have this type of distinction and uh, uh, and the terminology clarification, and uh, and if so, basically, how do we basically gain broader consensus? And I think this is the the discussion that you know, that we need to have. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. We have a bit of time for some question on this draft. Yeah, Thomas Eckert. So yeah, I mean, I've, I've just seen you know everybody whom I ask what intent is come up with a different. Um, you know, answer, and uh, I'd be, you know, in the camp with uh, um, Alex mostly in terms of that uh, we could, uh, you know, scope it to be smaller, and which I think other people would would also like. I mean, it would be not what currently I think in the Anima working group we're scoping or in you know 7575 intend to be. So that might be, you know, a change then in you know uh, with respect to existing documents. But um, I, I'm not sure how proactive we should do this, or just you know wait for for the um, the problem to boil up um, when future work you know gets done and and, and the question comes up, right? So maybe uh, keep this in the back of our mind and uh, propose to give these answers when they're actually needed, right? Because uh, you know changing from you know existing ways on how we interpreted words. To, to, to use them differently is always difficult. Thank you. Other comments or questions? So, hello, this is Sabine uh, from Nokia. Uh, I was wondering whether uh, this draft, I'm sorry I did not read it, but uh, I'm very interested in the topic. I'm working on it. I was wondering whether this work uh, tries to uh, build some bridges with what has been proposed uh, um, a couple of years ago already in the NFVRG. Uh, in that case, uh, intent was as well focusing on connectivity, but uh, using an intermediate uh, level uh, of uh, virtualization. But independently on that, uh, it was already focusing on how to uh, uh, design an intent grammar. And doing this implicitly, it was uh, like uh, defining, uh, specifying the scope of, of mm -hmm. uh, what intent-based networking is. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so I think basically a uh, couple of items uh, well, in response. So, first of all, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the intent here is is to have bridges and basically relate this to to prior work and so forth. Basically, one thing basically in the past, but also basically seeing maybe how to take that uh, that. Uh, yeah, how to basically to see also if we need to adjust or perhaps clarify or refine some of those terms going forward. But definitely, we want to have those bridges. Regarding the intent grammar or how you describe these things, these are aspects that I would consider actually are outside the scope of this. This will also be needed and required, but I think there is other work uh, or basically other venues and so forth that will take it up. But probably Anima, maybe one of them. I'm 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 guessing, uh, but this would be out of, outside the scope of, of this draft here. Yeah, if if I remember the my reading of the draft, I don't think it tries to capture and explain all the different forms of what people have called intent yet. And I think that, for example, if I look at presentations given by Google and about their intent-based networking, right, which is more about the structure of you know rendering any type of things that you have from you know what you want over what you get, I think that's a different form of interpretation. That I'm not sure if that is captured in the draft yet, and maybe you know just for for sake of completeness of you know the confusion we have about the term, maybe that's something to be added. Yeah. True. So basically, this is not captured there. Basically, the summary is captured, and there are some references given to that. Because I mean, just actually alone in the policy area, there are whole treatises. I mean, look at that. Which actually one of the references is the one by what was it, Rolf Butaba, who wrote a I think it's a it's a forty-page journal type of uh, thing, basically elaborating those in great detail. So clearly, basically, as a draft, we don't want to compete with that. But of course, we want to have at the minimum. But we want to have a summary of these things, and at the minimum, also referencing uh, this other work. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we will now switch to the remote presentation from Muli. Hello. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Um, yes, it's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, can we have the slides? It's on. It's on the screen. Uh, it's a little slow right now. Can you see the slide? I see intent based network management, IMBM. Not. This is not the right. Yeah, we are making the change. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah. yeah. This is what I want. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity uh, to present this draft. I wanted to be there at Singapore personally. Due to some logistic issues, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't be there. Uh, so please bear with me. Um, we are also excited uh, about this area of network intent. And uh, we want to take a slightly different uh, view from what was presented uh, by Alex, uh, my former colleague and good friend. So uh, what we wanted to do is explain some of the concepts and at least provide some sort of uh, view to our thinking in terms of next steps. So here is the next. Uh, can you please go to the next slide, please? Yeah. These are all the things that I want to, uh, we want to, uh, First of all, this is joint work with my colleague, Karthik, so, uh, who is also there in the meeting room. So we want to define what is network intent, at least what we are thinking. And as Alex was pointing out, there is a lot of confusion in terms of, uh, I mean, the lot of literature, there is confusion between intent, policy, configuration, and all that. So we want to at least make some uh, distinctions between what those are. And then we, uh, we have we are proposing an architecture for how the real life intent 
and some use cases and, in and next steps in terms of research. So those are all the things that I'd like to accomplish in this talk. Next slide, please. So uh, maybe this is, uh, in order to say what you are, uh, this slide is sort of uh, explaining what we are not, for example. So there are several uh, works in this topic of network intent. One is, as Alex was mentioning, the autonomic network intent that talks about distributed uh, computation on network devices and policies distributed to the network devices. That's one way to go about. And our approach, is going to be, uh, which we'll come to, is a little different. And then there is also this effort on domain-specific language-based approaches based on NEMO, which was uh, proposed from some of the folks from Huawei and also based on promise theory based uh, promise theory based approaches of uh, mark burgess and folks and uh, the third one is sort of more um, i would say tactical is that there are implementations that uh, at least advertise in terms of network intent by that they there is a one to one correspondence between intent and uh, configuration i mean then i mean uh, so maybe that might be the step zero or something. But I think uh, from a research perspective, uh, we uh, we thought it should be important to have a much higher level objective than the last one. Can we go to the next step? Uh, slide, please. So our, uh, is, now that I uh, explained what we are not, here is what we are thinking in terms of uh, the architecture. So an administrator can articulate what is the desired outcome from the network in rough terms? And it does not have to be very specific. And there can be ambiguity in that uh, in the desired outcome. And so, which is what uh, we meant is the network intent need not be prescriptive. It can be declarative. And a given intent can be realized in multiple ways. There need not be to the point that I was saying if an intent is there is if there is a one to one mapping between intent and configuration then i think uh, i mean there is possibility to do a lot more than that it becomes a very restrictive approach i think and the reason why there can be multiple approaches is that the functionality and the capability of the network might be different to realize an intent and different devices capability of devices that all come into play so there can be several ways to do that, and that intelligence has to be somewhere else. Right? And also, when you realize, when you want to realize intent in a network, that can also release, uh, lead to conflicts in the sense that, suppose I have an intent number seven that I uh, that was implemented yesterday, and today I come in and ask something about intent fourteen, but the question is to realize fourteen. Intent seven has to be deleted or something. So there are there are some issues in terms of conflicts, and how do we address them? So these are all some of the things that we are uh, thinking about. How uh, you know? I'm just uh, this this whole uh, topic is about what are the problems, etc., not solution. Right now, that's what we are discussing. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, there is a confusion. Uh, everywhere in Cisco, you know, in uh, in Cisco Live and other uh, where customers are talking about uh, policies, service models, and configuration and work intent to be the same, and that's at least not our uh, at least the uh, the goal that we are thinking of. Can we go to the next slide? So here is a high level, extremely ten thousand foot level uh, description or uh, realize how network intent can be realized. A network administrator sits at the top and then uh, articulates an intent. And let's say, uh, as Alex was uh, mentioning, has an interface to the SDN controller. And then the SDN controller sort of talks to an intent engine. And the intent engine resolves that intent into, uh, into some suitable instructions to the network. By the way, I'm not using the word policies or configurations, et cetera. And those are realized on the network devices. Eventually, to for that to run on a network device, it has to be configurations, right? But some, you know, there are there are things that that are calculated at the 
uh, intent engine and then tra transmit it to the devices and then the devices run those configurations and then and the points that I made in terms of conflict resolution, all those things need to be sorted out before a, a realized a intent can be successfully realized. Can we go to the next slide? So I had, uh, there are a couple of use cases and I made that uh, pretty big um, in the sense of, uh, you know, in the sense that there is enough ambiguity in the, uh, in the outcome. For example, one could ask, let's say you have a large network and you say, what are the congested links in the network? What does congestion mean? Congestion means, is it one packet loss, thousand packet loss, or, uh, you know, uh, link uh, utilization 80%. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it, it's not a, I mean, congestion is a pretty ambiguous word. And that's one intent. And then I want, you know, the the, uh, the first one is a classical thing uh, from, you know, for some folks will be familiar. I want to you know, place a call uh, from user A to user B. User A has some privileges, you know, an important person in the company. So in that sense, there has to be some sort of bandwidth that needs to be guaranteed end to end. So whereas the intent is very small, but that can be exploded into several types of actions that need to happen in terms of bandwidth, privileges, uh, and all that stuff, and, inter uh, and how much uh, performance the network has to support and all that. These are all some simple use cases, and we can definitely add a lot more to this. And that's one area that we, are, uh, we could potentially seek NMRG to provide some guidance in terms of if there are other use cases that we could think of. Can we go to the next slide? Please? So here are the, this is what uh, we want to. Uh, what are what are we? So we have some ideas. We are in the early problem definition stage, and there are some ideas in terms of uh, solution approaches that we are thinking about right now. As uh, as we mentioned some time back, there are multiple approaches that can be pursued. The autonomic networking perspective, that's clearly one approach. Uh, the domain-specific language-based techniques, the, those are also, there are folks uh, in the research community who are actively pursuing on this topic. We are, I mean, uh, some of us uh, are actively pursuing NLP-based techniques and these sort of machine learning AI-based techniques to address this issue. So in that sense, our approach, at least what we are considering right now is a little different from the other uh, things that are mentioned. And welcome suggestions and possible collaborations. And as I said, this is at a very early stage. And we thought this is sort of thing that we should present to NMRG because it is uh, conceptually not an easy problem, uh, difficult question. And if there is uh, suggestions and collaborations, uh, we are open to that. That's all I have. Thank you, Muli. Um, are there comments in the room or questions for this presentation? Uh, Dan Bogdanovich, with regards to the uh, congested links, that part, let's say resource management if you go to the previous slide, that's a resource management issue in the network. And uh, it, it comes down to um, resource tracking, just in this particular use case. I'll be curious to find out what other ones, what other problems they were thinking of. Because this one with, with you know, different bandit canning, they traffic engineering solutions is a pretty well known problem. Muli, did you get the, the comment from Dean? Yeah. Uh, so I just want a clarification. The, so the question is, is it already well understood or, uh, or, uh, or it's already a solved problem? Is that the question? 
I'm not able to. So uh, the, the point I wanted to say was the intent is very ambiguous. Let's say when the when the user administrator expresses this intent, congestion in the network can be several things. As I mentioned, there can be uh, very small packet loss may not be admissible for some applications. Whereas in some other applications, you know, as I said, thousand pa thousand packets, etc., that's not acceptable. Or link utilization or various things. So how do you realize that intent? In that sense, there is a little bit of ambiguity there. From the intent to what sort of uh, how do we how does the network react to this sort of uh, intent? So that was the that was the point I wanted to make. But if if the question from a network management point of view, if uh, you know if uh, I, I could have formulated the intent the other way, like give me the links in the network where if in octets. Uh, is greater than some number or something. That would be a very specific problem that folks have solved. Does it answer your question? Um, I was asking for a different use case. If you have, you know, that that was, that was my question. Uh, we have uh, we have some uh, several other use cases. Some of the ones that is even mentioned the. Uh, Autonomic networking, uh, RFC uh, 7575 in terms of uh, VM uh, movement and all that. Actually, there are some startup companies in this arena. And um, what shall I say? They, and uh, one of them in, in a base in Bay Area, there was one uh, intent in terms of, suppose you are given 1,000 VMs. Can you build a data center, uh, level two, you know, L2 design sort of data center? I thought such an intent was a very big intent, and we need to have smaller intents before we can actually go to so, sort of uh, having a much larger intent in, in terms of designing a data center. So that was the reason why we thought we'll have simple initial uh, vanilla use cases before we can realize much larger ones. Thank you. OK. Um, Diego Lopez. <clears throat> Probably it's due to my sheer ignorance and the fact that I have not read the, uh, the draft. Okay. But from the presentations, I, I, I'm not these two documents somehow addressing the same issue, or is that uh, the presentations are different? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that because <clears throat> good thing I was uh, about the previous one and this one, we, the, the, you seem to be addressing the same problem, trying to define what intent is, trying to put it in the framework of all the definitions, etc. Which are the plans? I mean, of, of the authors and the chairs about this. I'm, I'm curious. Just to... This is exactly the discussion we will we would like to have. So okay, if... sorry, sorry. No, it's, no, it's okay. It's <laughs> part of the agenda. If there are no further questions specifically on this draft, then we can open this discussion. Muli, uh, are you finished? Yeah, I'm done. If, okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. So now we have a bit of time to actually discuss about this document, but more generally, uh, we, as chairs, some time ago initiated this uh, topic uh, in the energy, we ask uh, some people, people that volunteered uh, to address uh, some aspect of developing this work. So it lays to the question from Diego to say, what are we trying to achieve uh, with those documents and in the research group uh, with this topic? What could be the next steps in terms of um, I mean, things we need to address in the research group to develop uh, this work? So. This is really an open discussion. We, we have currently these two documents that are very, uh, I mean, in an early phase. And uh, the question is up to the research group to say, we think we need to continue uh, on this aspect or this aspect. So if there are any one willing to, um, to comment on the Mac, we will receive that. We have also a bit of uh, aspect we would like to, to convey with Lisandro, but um, we'd like to give you the floor first.
uh, Giovanni Saidian. Um, it's not exactly about evolution, but it's more a philosophical question. Um, there's also the other research group on network uh, measurements, and I think somehow there's an overlap also of the network management working group. So it's something that could maybe these work groups could work closely in the future. I don't know, maybe it could be beneficial for both sides, I guess, to bring more measurements into this working group as well, to help in the manage, management approaches. It's just an idea. I'm not sure I get your point. You were talking about which group? So the, there is the MEPRG, the Measurements Analysis Protocol Research Working Group, and they have some sort of overlap. Uh, the, the two working groups overlap in the network ma uh, management one. And I'm not sure if would for the future for this working group, maybe we could combine forces or do something together. Um, I, don't, I'm, I think management does, is very re related to um, measurements as well. So maybe there's something that can be beneficial for both. I'm just- uh, Just to be sure, you, you are commenting uh, about the NMRG at large, not specifically on the intent. Uh, I'm not, I'm not commenting how, how this should be, the group should evolve, but maybe to bring those two together, like n not to change anything, but maybe collaborations. Okay. okay. Uh, just to clarify, now we have a slot of discussion just to, for the intent-based network management ah. discussion. And in the second part, where we discuss more largely about the NMRG, we have also discussion about evolution of NMRG. But All right, so we postpone this question. For okay, you. thank you. Dejan Bogdanovic. So it would be interesting to see the network management workflows from the operators and uh, essentially saying this is uh, how they are solving uh, certain of their daily operational problems. You know, for example, what would be the uh, workflow for peerings or adjacencies or, you know, uh, how do they uh, translate the services into the existing uh, logical and virtual and logical and uh, physical topologies. There's a lot of conversations about um, trying to replace a chassis router with a uh, collection of uh, physical devices uh, connected in different uh, physical topologies. You know, some type of a clause. How to calculate? the specifying I need the capacity or the throughput uh, and then calculate based on the service I want to deploy what kind of a topology, physical topology should be deployed with, uh, with uh, logical overlays on top of that. So the, these are the parts where, where some of the intent, you know, can come out and say, this is how how we might you know do and approach that. So having some of those better defined, I believe, would be uh, helpful uh, for the group to work on. Thanks, Dean. Hi, Lu Yuan Fang, Expedia. Um, so my comment on intent. I think intent-based network management is a very good idea, uh, but it has to define the intent clearly. You cannot say, yeah, I don't know how to define congested, I don't know what. If you don't know how to define the detail, define the above level, I want to optimize, I want to low balance this network. I don't want anywhere have more than 80% of traffic and so on. You got to have a clear definition on the intent. That's my first comment. Uh, second is, uh, um, just to say we're going to use AI and machine learning to, to do language, natural language recognition and so on. Um, it can be used, but it does not uh, help if you don't have a clear uh, description on the problem. For example, in my last company and my current company, all running e-commerce. So sometimes there was a question about you know, the real case. If in the network or in the total operation, sometimes you run into the problem people just writing down in natural language. It make problem much worse. So for that, I don't think it start with a natural language processing. Everybody write differently. English can, itself can be ambiguous. So put in the practice, right, how people do. I'm just bring that out. So people say, well, let's have a common form. 
fill this form. Where is the problem? What is the problem in certain defined way? That immediately clear all the problem. Otherwise, you cannot read it. So I don't think that part you need to have AI. But what AI can help is the next level. You know your intent. You know how you want to mitigate the problem. You want to identify the anomaly. You want to low balance. You want to optimize. These can be used. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Eckert. Yeah, so to go back to you know, the comment made in before, the, the way I see it is that we definitely need to try to figure out terminology first because I think um, they are really totally different things that people understand with intent. So, for example, if I give the worst case example, what I still think people would consider to be intent networking from Muli's uh, way, which is, I think, exactly one view to uh, see things is, okay, you got a network running, and th there is nothing cool about it, it's all just stupid CLI that you have, and now I have basically want to change my service, like, you know, a lot of things, and I just do also stupid new CLI, but now the intent-based networking is carefully take the new bloody CLI and try to make the network adopt to this without breaking down and going up in flames, right? And that sometimes is a very complex operation, right? The fact that, you know, on another planet, people are thinking about intent being a high-level abstraction of that crazy configuration that comes out in the end. That is, I think, orthogonal to it. And in both cases, we use the word intent, and that causes a lot of confusion. So I'm not sure who can win and kind of keep the word intent to his part. I think we're not going to have an influence on the big players in the market that go around and say that the whole process of rendering you know, future configuration from abstractions you know, into, you know, step-by-step -step updates to devices with control loops and then basically, you know, incrementally make sure the network is always running and uh, adopting uh, to, you know, these, these high-level things, the whole process, calling that intent. That's what I've seen in the industry because it's very abstract, very fuzzy, and so very nice for marketing, to use the word intent there, and we're not going to get rid of it. Right, so maybe that's a reason to say, okay, let's keep intent being that, and for anything else we're doing, we're coming up with more, pre like the data models and subdividing it in the way that Alex said, uh, maybe trying to get rid of the word intent there completely, and instead just coming up with different, you know, subsets of policy, you know, with the taxonomy of these things, and just leave the word intent to the marketing people describing an overall system. Just one idea on how to get rid of it. But we need to get rid of the, you know, confusion about different uh, semantics of intent. So, uh, can I make a comment, please? This is Molly here. Yes, for sure. So, uh, just uh, I'll take a slightly different view from, um, from the networks. And most of you might be aware of the development in uh, Amazon Echo, Google, uh, you know, Apple Siri, and all that. And these are used in many applications right now. For example, I can one 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 case where it is actually deployed right now is, hey, can you tell me what is my bank balance? And I could ask that question, and somebody else can ask the same question differently. And and that, and there is an answer that comes back saying your bank balance is so and so. And if your question is not phrased correctly, you get an error saying yours is not a good question. So the, I mean, there are uh, approaches how to solve the problem. There are NLP techniques to address that. So the question is, if if that can be solved in these, in and the Alexa has many use cases and all that. And most of you might be familiar with that. Can we take some of those concepts and then see how we can look at that from a networking perspective? And the answer is, I don't know. I'm purely as a researcher. I don't know the answer. Maybe it is possible. But I'd like to find it. Dan Bogdanovich, I think we are putting the cart in front of the horse, and I would support uh, Torless, you know, Torless's comments on that, that we would define the terminology and that we are using the same words that have, you know, the same meaning. And start with that. 
go up, you know, to some use cases that will be well defined by the operators and then move, you know, higher. Because right now, we, we really have to know that we are, when, that we are not overloading the terms. That would be the good start, you know, that would be a good start and then coming into the use cases because I know that often what operators are looking for is the SLA with the functionality. And there's a technical SLA and a business SLA. I have some ideas about the technical SLAs, but I have almost no idea about, you know, the business SLAs. And they want to be able to express that into a concise, you know, essentially description what they want to get from the network. But what is that exactly? That would be, you know, a good thing to find out and get those set of requirements from them. Diego Lopez, um, apart from putting the cart behind the horse, I think, I think, no, the cart is, has to be behind the horse. That's one, one, once we are, we are set, we are. Apart from that, uh, the idea would be as well to, to know what we want to carry on the, on the cart. And I think that, uh, for sure, we, we need the terminology because we, are, we keep talking about intent and we keep talking about uh, this is intent, this is not intent, and we all, we all have a different... Uh, I, 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 only, I only know of a, of a word that is that much overloaded recently, that is slice. Everything is a slice. And everything, and well, we could do slice or intent of slices or a slicing intent or something like that, no, seriously. Something that would be, apart from this, just I, I support definitely that, that we need, I mean, the interpretation of this group that hopefully will end up being the interpretation of the IRTF and even the IRTF. But uh, apart from that, something that would be interesting as well, uh, we keep talking here about how to express intent, how not to express intent, the language is natural language, etc. which is, again, is a, is a extremely wide uh, uh, um, um, set of possibilities and probably having a formal description of not i'm not talking about a language i'm talking about a, an information model a schema whatever to how the intent could be defined will be an extremely interesting result on top of it we could build a, a formal languages to build intent uh, we could uh, consider how intent can be translated from natural language we could do several uh, move in several directions, exchange intent expressions using protocols, whatever. But that formal description, that uh, that uh, if you like, that information model will be a, will be ideal to be a one. Of, I mean, one of the main goals of this activity, apart from this ambiguity in the terms. Okay, <clears throat> we still have another part of it to cover, so I think we have already had good, some good comments on the mic. So just to give a rough conclusion, and of course in the minutes and on the mailing list, we will try to um, precise more the next step. But what I get from the, um, from the comment on the mic is that there is a need to fi fix the terminology first. I mean, this is uh, to clarify the use of the terms, and uh, this is a... Uh, what has been tried to be done in the, in the initial draft. So we will, I think, increase the efforts on the, the terminology. They have been also uh, pointing the need to define more clearly uh, use cases and uh, the operational perspective, I mean, from the operator or from uh, configuration of networks, where uh, an intent-based approach uh, would be meaningful. So <clears throat> we will try also to reflect on that to see if we need to have uh, other documents highlighting use cases or if we need to collect uh, requirements or inputs from the operators. Uh, there have been also the comments on the, the aspect of using or not uh, natural language processing uh, in, in this work uh, with different diverging uh, opinions. So we will see what we can do with that. Just a bit of my summary uh, I, I would like to propose to you is, for me currently there are multiple definitions and multiple domains uh, that are using the term intense. So this is uh, for me one factor that explains the, um, the confusion in the use of the terms. We have in SDN and FV, but also uh, 
in network management, everyone is using intents for their own purpose. Uh, usually it relates to different approaches and different means of realizing an intent based system. Uh, and also targeting different levels or different layers. Uh, so for someone, an intent is just the first level of abstraction on top of an uh, SDN switch uh, or SDN controller. Uh, but for other people, intent is what the user is injecting to a, towards an operator or, or a network. So it's very different levels of, uh, of intents. So there is different producer, different consumer of intents. The I think most common aspect of intent that everyone converging is that it's an abstraction. It's not, it's not much to say that, but at least everyone converged saying that we need to work on abstractions. Those abstractions can be at different levels, representing different things, but at least this is a means uh, people want to use uh, to, um, <clears throat> to enable, I will say, more powerful uh, network management, network configuration. Uh, so the question comes now, what to do next, and I think we will also explore that uh, later offline. But um, first, to remind that we are in a research group. So just to contradict a bit to all us about uh, letting, uh, I mean, the industry or the, 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 the thing stabilize and decide, I think we are here also to uh, a bit uh, work ahead of time, I mean, ahead of the, con uh, of, the, of the market. So we need to investigate this. I mean, if the research group agrees on that, this is, I think, something we should do ahead of, uh, of the industry. Not saying that the industry will not do what they want, but at least uh, from a research perspective, uh, we, we need this is something we, we could do. Um, so the effort will surely be on the uh, terminology or taxonomy. Uh, there will surely be something like this. Uh, as discussed in previous meetings, there is also the uh, aspect of identifying key components, I mean functions and techniques, uh, to realize internet-based networking system. This is also useful uh, in identifying how to build an internet-based system. And maybe in between those two, um, there can be a work to uh, identify either through the use cases or operational practices, what are really the challenges we want to address with intent-based networking. Because so far we have been talking about techniques, uh, how we can do stuff, but not really maybe pinpoint what is challenging uh, currently uh, in networking and why intent-based network could be a good concept to address those challenges. And yeah. so, I'd like just to try to also summarize, but it seems to me that uh, we are talking at least about three different aspects. The first one is the terminology defining what what an in intent is and what it is not. So, and uh, what's the relationships, for example, between intent and policies. The second aspect is uh, how to express them, something that has been mentioned too. So we may have uh, uh, information model to to express intent, for example, as Diego mentioned that, right? So, one aspect is is the terminology. The second aspect is how to express them, and the the third aspect it seems to be how to realize it over the network. So that could include, for example, architectures as mentioned before, or components and so on. So, uh, in in use cases, could help in that part as well. So. I would summarize in three aspects. The de terminology, the definition of what intent is, the how to express it, and how to realize it. Thank you. We will now continue with the, because we don't have much time left, uh, the second part, which is more a status. You want to do it? <laughs> but I cannot take note while I speak. Okay, so the, um, okay, I go at the mic, it's better. So this is just to reflect on what has been done this year in NMRG and also what we would like to do with you next year. Next slide, please. So we had four meetings in uh, 2017, including this one in March in uh, Chicago uh, with 66 participants. And the topic was, uh, I will say, beyond autonomics, autonomics 2.0, uh, where we had a bunch of presentation and um, uh, still, we want to maybe initiate also some activity on, on this uh, uh, re revision of autonomic networking. Uh, a second meeting was in uh, the IM conference in Lisbon. Uh, we had uh, much fewer participants, but it was more kind of interim meeting and uh, 
it's difficult to attract people in the in this conference but uh, we this is where we investigated new research items and in fact this is where we initiated more concretely um, the these new documents on internet based networking and the realization is today um, then in Prague IETF 99 uh, with uh, 34 uh, 3, 34 and 85 participants in the two sessions uh, the first session was the general meeting on uh, on an emerging with general topics addressed and the second one was uh, the series on uh, the workshop series on measurement based network management which is uh, always successful and so i joined giovanni in the the fact that there is in uh, an emerging uh, one of the pillar it's uh, monitoring and measurement based, uh, measurement, man measurement based management sorry <laughs> and um this has been uh, here in the research group for a long time uh, more recently mapg uh, has uh, has emerged and and maybe a collaboration between the two groups. Uh, this is something we need to discuss with them. Uh, and today, uh, so we have uh, again two sessions uh, in these IETF meetings. So this one, which is uh, the topic on intent based network management. And we expect to continue that in, in future meetings and uh, more concrete activity uh, offline. But also uh, tomorrow we have a, a dedicated meeting uh, that was uh, jointly organized also with uh, <clears throat> a group on IDNet, intelligence driven networks. Uh, and the topic is the use of artificial intelligence techniques uh, for network management. Excellent. So concerning the progress of the work, um, we have one active research group document, uh, which has just passed the IRSG poll, and uh, the next step will be to go to IRSG review. So this is a, a good achievement, especially because it was very difficult to make progress, uh, I mean, on the uh, approval of the document uh, for logistic reason, I would say. But um, this comes to an end. I hope uh, we will be able to speed up a bit the process to, to have publication before the end of the year. Uh, in parallel to that, we have also four active individual documents. So there are two on the intents. The third one is uh, on the reinforcement learning techniques. And the fourth one is on the SDN graphs. And uh, we also had this year a decision on uh, one previous research group document that was on uh, IP fix that was not accepted to be published uh, after an ISG conflict review. And the authors are investigating if they would like to propose that uh, via individual submission. For next year, uh, this is really a shopping list. Uh, so what we used to do in the NMRG is to have uh, at least one meeting with uh, one of the uh, IEEE IM NOMS conference. This is uh, the premium network management conferences in IEEE. So we would like to keep this uh, this setup. So this will make us meet at NOMS uh, in Taiwan in April. Uh, beyond that, we also used to have uh, collocated meetings with IETF meetings. So these are the three that are planned for next year. We don't need to meet at every IETF. This is also up to the group to decide where it's more relevant to meet. So we have uh, London in March, Montreal in July, and the uh, location to be announced in November. Uh, so this will also make a poll on the mailing list to, to, to get the feeling of the research group where it's more relevant to meet. In parallel to that, uh, through either through discussion we have with different groups uh, inside and outside of IETF, RTF. We are also trying to organize other interim or topical meetings uh, on, on specific aspects. So also, if you would like to suggest, suggest specific meetings that you think are relevant and um, you have ideas how to organize it, it can be with uh, workshops, with another conference, on other SDO or uh, uh, open source project um, events, this is something we can organize. So if you have proposal ideas where you think the, the energy uh, it's important that we meet other people with other views doing other stuff. It's also something we can organize uh, next year. So the last slide will be to evolution of the energy. Um, <clears throat> what we have presented already at the beginning of the year is try to structure the activity of the research group around the research agenda with some themes. Uh, okay, today we uh, have gone through the themes on uh, intent-based network management. So we think we starting to have a bit of momentum, uh, willingness of people to uh, write documents and continue the effort on uh, defining uh, work for, for the research group on this topic. Uh, we also had discussion in the past about Autonomics 2.0, and uh, tomorrow we'll investigate AI techniques for network management. So this is not uh, yet settled. This is things we want to discuss with the research group. What are the priorities? What are the energies we, we can collect to really address and progress the work in those themes? Uh, of course, if you have other topics, share them on the mailing list, come talk with us. Uh, it's really open, network management is a, is a very wide topic. 
And from these themes, we want also to be able to define a bit more, I will say, a second level research items. So as we discussed uh, on the IBM, for instance, uh, how to call them, how to, um, uh, so the different stages of, of doing internet-based networking, but also uh, also to reflect on a, on a global work plan. It's not, it will not be as a, as a working group or uh, it will be a, a very strict milestones, but just to highlight what, where we want to end uh, with this work in the research group. It can be one year, two year timeline, but to highlight this is what milestone we want to reach uh, and to make progress and, ref and uh, reflect on this progress in the research group. And finally, because um, we are trying also to, to, to revive a bit how we work in the energy is, do we need a new charter? I mean, it's not mandatory, but uh, energy is uh, longest lived research group in IRTF. It started in 1999. Uh, the charter is very well written because it survived up to now. So we can keep it if you think it's uh, still relevant, but uh, networks have changed a lot since then. And if we think that the missions or the scope are, are not well reflected in, uh, in the charter, this is something we can consider to revise the charter uh, more or less. So it's all up to us, up to you to decide what we want to do with uh, this research group. I think we have maybe a bit of time if you can get feedback about, um, especially, do we need to recharter and the aspect you would like to cover uh, in, in the research agenda? Come back. No, I don't think we need to read that. <laughs> I, I would prefer to have uh, feedback from the room if you think uh, we are going the right way to restructure the, the research group, or not restructure, but to structure the research group, what topics you think are very important, we need to prioritize, how to address those topics, uh, and only if you think that we are going the right way, this will encourage us to continue this way. Thank you. Okay, so no, just uh, Diego Lopez. I, I, I like the idea of having this structure around a few uh, main goals or or main uh, paths to go so i and i think that even related uh, at least uh, ibn i mean the uh, uh, intent and, and i techniques ai techniques are really relevant autonomics tool for me is a, is a little bit fuzzy right now but uh Probably, probably somehow connected with the others, and this is something that we had to, uh, I mean, to, to, to make our minds up to, to be clear whether we're referring to that. And apart from that, I don't think that we need to, to change the charter at all. I mean, the charter is uh, wide enough and, and reasonable enough to accommodate this, def uh, definitely. Better, better not touch it if it's... Yeah, Alex Clem. Um, yeah, regarding this, I, I think it's a good idea to have actually some themes and support to give a little bit structure for, for, the, for those reasons um, and give it a little bit uh, direction purpose. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to to really change this charter for that. I think the charter has served very well. Um, uh, the question is, okay, could there be some terminology that could be modernized, if you will, for have the control aspect and support reflected? Maybe, but I, uh, but I'm, I'm not sure. At the same time, it has served us well so far, so it might as well also be left un, untouched. Maybe looking if it, if the terminology can be dusted off, but uh, otherwise, I think leave it as is. Thank you all for your comments and, and participation. Uh, we are already over time. Uh, just bear in mind, we meet also tomorrow morning with a big session on the use of AI techniques for network management with a very good program. So please join us tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye. And please bring back the blue sheets if you have uh, it close to you. Thank you. <laughs>